Mm -hmm. Staying in the state of Texas, we're going to go over now to Daniel. Hi, Daniel. How may we help you today? Hey, how are you doing this afternoon? We're doing well. Um, so, you know, well, we kind of saw this coming down the road like the last two or three years and arguing a lot. Um, and I caught her having an affair. Mm. Um, our son was, you know, graduated in May. <clears throat> and then um, he moved into an apartment in July and or the, in, in August. But we, I had a feeling something was going on. Had, you know, the whole... Your gut's telling you there's something going on. The phone was chiming at night, and that's how I found out about Tinder. So, mm. but um, caught her at the motel, and you know I forgave her right away. And I was I was hurt. I was in shock. But we were arguing, you know, and and I had a bad temper, you know, and I would call her things, yell at her, and she'd do it right back to me. And mm -hmm. so it was, you know, that I I take ownership for treating her like a butt, uh, and I did. And um, but um. She ended up moving out August 20th, and we were still kind of communicating, and we still are now. Um, my question is, how do I know if if this is repairable or not? Um, she she still reaches out for me for, for financial help, which I you know I definitely still help her when she needs it. Um, and then she'll call me when she's kind of you know when the pressure of having to work two jobs now to make ends meet. Um, when our son doesn't want to hang out with her because he's kind of bitter towards his mom. Um, and she'll call out to me and break down to me and, and then like with, with her part-time job, it's at a, um, Kohl's and she gave me the spousal discount card, you mm -hmm. know, when she didn't have to do that. How long so did you just, say that y'all have been separated? Um, since August 20th. And, so um, three months-ish. I, I just, yeah, three months, you know, and, and I told her I'm mm -hmm. not getting a divorce. You know, I told her I'm not going to file. If you really want it, you file. And, you know. And I'm trying to work on my pies and mm -hmm. smart contact and so and she you know and so when did you stop saying the mean angry things to her at what point? July 14th. Okay, so why did she move out in August if you stopped doing that in July? What was the motivation because for her move? She just she said she needed space away from me. She said that being around the house um, was too much pressure on her, and she didn't like seeing me upset. Okay, so you continued, honestly, I mean, you continued to be upset through August then. You were still, either by facial expressions or, or tone of voice or something, even if you stopped doing the mean things, were you right. still indicating to her how upset would you uh, with her that you were up until the time she moved out? Is that the case? Well, I wasn't showing her I was upset towards her. I was upset that she wanted a separation. Right. You know, I was showing, like, um, you, you know, instead of being more, you know, okay with it i was more you know almost begging her and and mm -hmm. i know I, I watched a couple of your videos and that was the wrong thing to do mm -hmm. yeah and it made matters worse and that's why she decided to get an apartment and move out because she didn't want to be around the emotional me not the angry me but the emotional me breaking down crying mm -hmm. um begging her mm -hmm. so so are you like so that that's now? Where we're at now are you like that no now? not right now um good no um i've lost I mean, the, the physical part, you know, intellectual, you know, emotional and spiritual. I've started going back to church. I've lost, you know, over 30 pounds. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very careful how I speak with her and not speak at her. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm really making an effort to try to, you know, entice her back, you know, and, and show her that I'm a changed person. Yeah. But it just feels like it's a pull. Like she'll, she'll give me a little, then pull back. Mm -hmm. And I do have a feeling that she is dating somebody. Um, and that, that's the part that hurts me, that she'll give me a little, then she'll pull back. She'll give me a little, then she'll pull back. And on the weekends, especially, you know, there's no calls from her on the weekends, but on the weekdays, she'll, you know, she'll, you know, send me a text message and, you know, like six, seven o'clock at night, but on the weekends, there's no contact. And if that's you knew, feel like she, if you knew for a fact that she is indeed dating on the weekends or seeing somebody, whatever, if you knew that for a fact, how would that change what you do, my friend? It wouldn't. Not at all. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't. Okay. I mean, I, I love my wife, you know, and I just, like I told her when everything happened, if, if I would have known then what would have happened, I, I would have worked on our marriage like I'm trying to work on our marriage now. Mm -hmm. I just never expected it to happen like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
How many years have you been married? Uh, 12 years. We've 12 known years. each other for 22 years, um, but we were married for 12. And like I said, it's just, you know, it. these last five, six years, there's a lot of arguing, a lot of, um, you know, I caught her lying about overspending and, and you know, just it, it, she got us in the financial bind several times, and finally I took over all the bills and stuff, and, and she felt like she was um, – she didn't have any control, and that's mm. one of the things she told me when I caught her that day. She has no control on the bills, on the phone, on anything. And I and I told her instead of thinking about and shut my mouth, I said, "Well, you wanted me to do this so we wouldn't be evicted." And and then that's when you know just I, a lot of downward spirals. I realized spirals. I needed to shut my mouth. Right. right. And you said you have a son. Is the son in your custody most of the time, or are you half and half? And I, you know, he's he's a college son. He's, he's oh, he's, that's college. right. He, he said he graduated. You know, mm -hmm. right. And, and, and then she did say that she waited until he graduated to do this, and and he's very he's only been to her apartment once for a couple of hours, and he doesn't want to hang out with her, mm -hmm. doesn't want to talk to her. He's and he only did that as a favor to me because she's really upset that she won't ha he won't hang out with her. Okay, mm -hmm. when people feel controlled or dominated, that's the second biggest thing we see uh, when it comes to our workshops. Or marriages in crisis, people that come to our workshop, the, the most common thing we would see, as you would probably guess, would be infidelity. The second biggest thing we see is when a spouse feels controlled or dominated, like I can't function like an adult because of the fact that I'm watched financially, I'm watched this way, I'm watched this way or that way, the other way. Okay. She, she, uh, Kimberly used the word downward spiral, so it sounds like that over the last few years that she's gotten into more and more kinds of things. Now, I'm not trying to put your wife down. Don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to put her down. I'm trying to help you understand that if you're going to put this back together, and I do believe you love her, that it seems as if this, this tie is not completely broken because of the fact that she's still communicating with you when she's upset. Mm -hmm. Now, if she were just communicating to you when she needed money, then we would say, okay, that, that doesn't mean much of anything other than the fact that she needs money. But I heard you say that she communicates to you when she's upset about this or upset about that, which means that she still has some degree of respect for you. She still has some degree of emotional connection with you, mm -hmm. and she's looking for you to help. Now, that's a good sign. That means a possibility exists. I would recommend, my friend, that you be very careful to examine your life to see if you're coming across as controlling in any other fashion. Now, it sounds as if you've done a lot of really good self-analysis. It's done. It sounds as if you've done a whole lot to make things better, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think that's good. But understand that if she's been doing these things five or six years, mm -hmm. now, I understand the affair came at the end, but if she's been doing these things for five or six years, this is not the kind of thing you're going to fix in five or six weeks. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to evolve past those things. Mm -hmm. You probably, I don't know what she's doing on the weekends, obviously. I mean, how could I? But you probably need to go ahead and do some self-analysis about how am I going to react if, if I were to discover that she really is dating other people on the weekend. Am I really going to be able to handle that or not? Because prepare yourself for that. I'm not saying it's happening, but you've said it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Then, in these conversations that you have, remember the conversations that are made face-to-face -face come off a whole lot better than are done by text or even done by telephone. Mm -hmm. Now, if you try to force that to happen, you're going to come across as even more controlling. But if you were to offer that, like when she texts you, I'm upset about this, I'm upset about that, I'm bothered about this, I need to talk to you. One of my recommendations would be you say, I'm happy to talk to you, still care very deeply about you. Uh, tell you what, can't do it right now. Let's meet over at the coffee shop uh, at 2 o'clock or 7 o'clock or whatever it might be. And, and uh, if you don't have much time, we can do a half hour, an hour, whatever you wish. If somehow without forcing it, or, or being purely manipulative because that's not good. But if you can offer suggestions that do lead to more face-to-face -face conversations, right. then the greater likelihood you have of her realizing that you're getting past being daddy, you're being past being controlling, and that you honestly and truly can forgive her. Now, if you do that, I know it's kind of a weird thing, Kimberly, but we hear it all the time. People say, I couldn't stay there because she continued to look miserable all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm the husband, I had the affair, we're past it, but she just looked miserable all the time. I can't go back home because I can't handle that because it makes me feel guilty. Mm -hmm. In this case, it sounds like the opposite. Like, he, she's looking at him saying, I can't handle you looking miserable all the time. Right. Because that really does magnify the sense of guilt. Now, guilt's a good thing when it says something's wrong, stop it. 
Guilt is really good when it comes to that. People should feel guilty when they're doing things wrong. The problem is when everything's supposedly straightened out and then you keep feeling guilty, now it's not helping, mm -mm. it's hurting. Mm -hmm. It's like, how are we ever gonna get past this? And so if you can take stock of yourself, I'm not asking you to walk on, on pins and needles. Did I just mix a metaphor when I said that? <laughs> I'm not asking you to, to be so scared to say a word that you can't function because that won't work either. You've gotta be able to be open and honest and human and real. Just be aware of the fact that you should not go see her if you're feeling sad and down because she's gonna probably read that as, oh my goodness, he's still hurt because of what I did. If you can make those meetings, if first of all, she'll agree. And again, that's, that's what I would do. Like, wow, well, I'm happy to talk to you about this, but really, I, can we just do it face to face because right now I'm kinda of tired of doing this, blah, blah, blah. And, and you meet her face to face. And if you can be just calm, you don't have to be exuberant. You don't have to act. Right. But at least don't come in there like you're depressed and miserable because of the fact that she's still got this emotional connection with you. This is a possibility of, of planting the seeds to begin to gradually put this back together. Just don't expect it to happen that fast. That's right. My encouragement would be as you're working on your pies to, you know, physical is great, spiritual is great, absolutely. A lot of people when they're in this space, they still think mostly about the situation, their marriage, what their spouse is doing or not doing, and they're playing all these what ifs in their mind. My encouragement to you would be replace your thoughts with some other things because the more you're ruminating about what's going on, the more you're going to be in that nervous space mm. where you're, when you do see her, you are, you know, you look that way and all of those things. So get a hobby, go out with friends, do something to replace those thoughts and focus on other things. Your marriage isn't going to get any better by you just thinking about it. You have to do the things, which you're doing some of them, you're doing a lot of them, but keep doing the things that you need to do and focus your time and attention on other things as well so that this doesn't drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. Very good.